Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV, and we're gonna work with loops in this video. So I'm gonna show you how to write some code. And let's get started. I'm gonna create a new Xcode project. And for this one, I'm gonna stick to the OS X application just because it's simpler, and I'll go command line tool. Then we'll hit next. And from here, we'll type loops as the project name, and then you fill in the other values choose foundation in the type, hit next. All right, and then let's save it on, all right, let's save it on the desktop in my projects folder. And let's go to main.m. We're gonna remove the initial code. And let's get started with the countdown example we just went over in the lecture. So we're gonna say int seconds is equal to five. And then while seconds is greater than zero. And in here, we're gonna print out a message. So this is gonna be T minus X number of seconds, and then we need to subtract one. Again, we're using the percent D here to represent uh, a token for the integers which is our seconds variable. And so that will get replaced. If we go ahead and hit the run button, you can see that the application is still running and we have a problem. The problem is our loop is still running and you can see the timestamp. And this is in seconds uh, in the middle right here. And then this is milliseconds. And so what it's doing is it's just printing T minus five seconds out a lot. And if this was your countdown timer for a space shuttle launch, that would be a bad day. So we're gonna fix that and we're gonna say seconds minus minus. So we're using the decrement operator and this will subtract one from the value of seconds, which is our variable. And then it will store that value in seconds. And so if we run this again, we'll see that it counts down from five to one and then it stops. Now we want to print takeoff after that, so I'll put in another NS log at the end, and we just say takeoff here. So if we run that again, we see that it counts down, five, four, three, two, one, and then it goes takeoff. So that's exactly what we did with the recursive uh, demo in the advanced functions video. So this is just another way to do it. Now let's look at working with a for loop and I'm gonna print out 100 numbers. So we'll create a variable int i and i will be our index um, variable. So that's sort of how we keep track of where we are. And we're gonna do a for loop. If I start typing this, uh, I can type it myself or I can let it autocomplete. I'll go ahead and type it myself. So i is equal to one, semicolon. i is a less than i is less than or equal to 100, i plus plus. And so this is the increment operator. So i is gonna be increased by one every time. And then we can print out the value. All right, so this is a for loop and if we go ahead and run it, we'll see an issue I have a typo here, so I didn't capitalize the L. I'll fix that and try and run it again. And we see that we printed out 100 numbers down here. So that's a loop. Let's jump into the debugger real quick just to see what's going on here. I'm gonna insert a breakpoint and we're gonna play it again. All right, so now it's stopped on this line down here. And if we step over, we'll see it jumps to the top. It prints out one. And now what it's gonna be doing is it's got the value i here. And if you hover over it, it should show you the value. So i started with one. Since we finished the loop, it went to the bottom brace down here. And then it jumped back up. And it's now going to evaluate this statement. So if we step one more time, 
it should have evaluated that and we have a new value of i if i hover over you see it says two so it just changed and that's going to print out the other thing it's doing is it's checking our condition so it only executes this first part once when it first starts and then it's always checking our condition to make sure that it should keep on going and then at the very end it's going to increment so it's going to run the code in here, then it's gonna increment, and then it's gonna come back to the top and check the condition. And as long as i is less than or equal to 100, it's gonna keep on repeating it. So that's why if we hit the play button right here, it will keep stepping and we see that the value is going up. We can show this bottom sidebar down here and we can see the value of i as it's changing. And so that's the, that's the same value that we see that gets printed out the only reason that it is lagging behind on the print statement is because the value of i is incremented at the end of this. And so we're looking at the current value and we still have to execute this line. So when we execute that, we'll see that the value is seven and seven here. So that's what happens when we step over this line of code to execute it. Okay, so that's a for loop, and this is really helpful when we want to do something with that and when we want to print out multiple things, when we want to download multiple images for our iPhone apps. There's many reasons why you'd want to use a for loop. So play around with this a little bit so that you can sort of understand how it works. All right, so the next example, the next example that I want to show you is going to be printing out only even or only odd numbers. And so we're going to create another loop for this. And I'm going to put a message up here. So just make sure that you use a capital L when you type NSLog. Then you have the at symbol, the quotation mark. And we're just going to say even or odd. Just as a, a heading so that we know um, when this one ended so that we can sort of see the output. Because there's going to be a lot of numbers. So I'm going to do for int i. Well, since i is already initialize up top, I, I don't need to redo that statement. So I'm just gonna say i is equal to one. And we'll do less than or equal to 100, and then i plus plus. All right, and don't put a semicolon after that. You wanna do a open bracket, and then it should auto insert one for you. So here we're gonna add a little bit of logic and we're gonna use that continue statement. So I'm gonna say if zero is equal to i modulus two, so this is using the, the modulus operator, which is the percent sign. What that means is it's going to give us the remainder. So any number that we divide by 2, we can tell if it's even or odd based on the remainder. If we divide 7 by 2, we get 3.5, which means that we're going to have a remainder of 1. And so if I modulus, if 7 modulus 2 is going to be equal to 0, then we can do something. All right, so if we look at an example, seven modulus two is gonna be one. That's because seven divided by two is 3.5. And if we think about it, that's gonna be seven divided by two is three with a remainder of one. And so what this statement is doing, I modulus two is saying, okay, seven modulus two, my remainder is gonna be one. So that's the value that this is going to be. And is one equal to zero? And the answer is no. So it's not going to execute. So in this situation, we're just going to type continue. Continue means we jump to the very end. Continue will jump to the end, but it doesn't exit the loop. Now, if that statement is not true, what we're going to want to do here is print out the current value. So let's look at what happens. What we're saying here is this is not true for 7, so it's going to continue. It's not going to continue here. It's going to go to the end of the if, and it's going to come down here, and it should print out 7. And we're a little bit lucky because the previous example is showing seven, um, but we're not at this 
block of code yet. So we have to actually stop this and run this again. And we'll get rid of the breakpoint. And I'll hit the resume button down here. And we should see all of the odd numbers printed out. So we can see seven right here. All right, so that is working with even odd. If we want to change this so that we only print out the even numbers, we can do one is equal to i modulus two, and then we can do that continue. And now we will see the even numbers. Now, the way I've written this is probably not how you'd normally write it, but I wanted to show you how continue worked. And we'll just put a breakpoint here so we can watch the flow of execution. We should see that if this is a true statement, it's going to hit continue, and then it's going to jump to the very bottom. And let's see what happens when we hit play. All right, so now we're going to evaluate this statement. I'm going to show the sidebar. And let me get rid of this bar on the side. Current value of i is 1, so 1 modulus 2. What's that going to be? That's true. So 1 modulus 2 is 1, because if you try to divide 1 by 2, your remainder is 1. So it's true, and we hit the continue. And what happened is it jumped all the way to the bottom and then back up to the top. And so i is going to increment. And if we step, we'll see that i is now 2. So it just incremented. And now it's checking our condition again. So is 2 modulus 2 equal to 1? No. That's equal to 2 modulus 2 is not equal to 1. So if we step, it will skip the continue and it will actually execute the line below this if statement. So if we step one more time, we'll see the printout. And now we're back up, we're doing our check to make sure that we're less than 100, and then we're going to increment again. And so we'll see that the value of i increases. All right, so that's working uh, with a for loop to print out even or odd numbers using the modulus operator, which we learned about in the numbers video. So play around with these loops, print out some different numbers, you can increase the ranges or you can decrease them to see what happens. And if you have a breakpoint, you can just drag it off to get rid of it and either hit the play button up top or hit the resume button down here. And so we should see only 10 numbers print. Okay, so you've learned how to use loops and you just need to experiment a little bit.